A poet is not at all poetical. He is the most unpoetical thing in existence. He has no identity. He's continually filling some other body. The sun, the moon. Poetic craft is a carcass, a sham. If poetry does not come as naturally as leaves to a tree, then it had better not come at all. Would you teach me poetry? I'd like to understand it. I don't know how to begin. My heart aches, and a drowsy numbness pains my sense. As though a hemlock I had Is it successful? There were two very positive reviews by friends and six mainly positive and all hostile. <coughs> I don't know, is that successful? Yes. <coughs> so you have such clear hope for your new book of poems. Oh, they're more beautiful than any I've read of Mr. Coleridge, Mr. Wordsworth, even Lord Byron. But when I receive a letter, I know our world is real. Gentlemen, I, I think we should hear Dr. Bree on the issue of climate for Keats's health. Well, you know, for a gentleman, I'm afraid. He's good. Does he want He has to come. I do think there is an issue of finance. <coughs> Could we not, between us, start a fund? No, it's Mr. Keats. This is born in. It is as unbearable to me as I know it is to you. Mr. Keats has died. He received an account from Sam. of February. At four in the afternoon, Keats called me, Severn, Severn, lift me up for I am dying. I shall die easy. Don't be frightened. Thank God it has come.
My heart aches, and a drowsy numbness pains my sense, as though of hemlock I had drunk, or emptied some dull opiate to the drains one minute past, and Lethe woods had sunk. Tis not through envy of thy happy lot, but being too happy in thine happiness, that thou, light-winged dryad of the trees, in some melodious plot of beech and green and shadows numberless, Singest of summer in full-throated ease. Oh, for a draught of vintage that hath been cooled a long age in the deep delved earth, tasting of flora and the country green, dance and Provencal song and sunburnt mirth. Oh, for a beaker full of the warm south, full of the true, the blushful hippocrene, with beaded bubbles winking at the brim and purple stained mouth that I might drink and leave the world unseen and with thee fade away into the forest dim fade far away dissolve and quite forget what thou among the leaves hast never known the weariness the fever and the fret here where men sit and hear each other groan where palsy shakes a few sad last grey hairs, where youth grows pale and spectre thin and dies, where but to think is to be full of sorrow and leaden-eyed despairs, where beauty cannot keep her lustrous eyes, or new love pine at them beyond tomorrow. Away, away, for I will to thee, not charioted by Bacchus and his pards, but on the viewless wings of poesy, though the dull brain perplexes and retards. Already with thee, tender is the night, and haply the queen moon is on her throne, clustered around by all her star starry fays. But here there is no light, save what from heaven is with the breezes blown through verdurous glooms and winding mossy ways. I cannot see what flowers are at my feet, nor what soft incense hangs upon the boughs, but in embalmed darkness guess each sweet where with the seasonable month endows the grass, the thicket, and the fruit tree wild. White hawthorn and the pastoral eglantine, fast fading violets covered up in leaves, and mid May's eldest child, the coming muskrose, full of dewy wine, the murmurous horn to flies on summer eaves. Darkling, I listen, and for many a time I have been half in love with easeful death. Called him soft names in many a mused rhyme to take into the air my quiet breath. Now more than ever seems it rich to die, to cease upon the midnight with no pain, while thou art pouring forth thy soul abroad in such an ecstasy. Still wouldst thou sing and I have ears in vain, to thy high requiem become a sod. Thou wast not born for death, immortal bird, no hungry generations tread thee down. The voice I hear this passing night was heard in ancient days by emperor and clown, perhaps the selfsame song that found a path through the sad heart of Ruth, when, sick for home, she stood in tears amid the alien corn. The same that oft times hath charmed magic casements, opening on the foam of perilous seas in fairy lands forlorn. Forlorn. The very word is like a bell to toll me back from thee to my sole self. Adieu. The fancy cannot cheat so well as she is famed to do, deceiving elf. Adieu, adieu, thy plaintive anthem fades, past the near meadows, over the still stream, up the hillside, and now it is buried deep in the next valley glades. Was it a vision, or a waking dream? Fled is that music, do I wake or sleep?
Drowsy numbness pains my sense, as though of hemlock I had drunk, or emptied some dull opiate to the drains one minute past, and leafy woods had sunk. Tis not through envy of thy happy lot, but being too happy in thine happiness, that thou, light-winged dryad of the trees, in some melodious plot of beech and green and shadows numberless, singest of summer in full-throated ease. Oh, for a draught of vintage that hath been cool the long age in the deep delved earth, tasting of flora and the country green, dance and Provencal song and sunburnt mirth. Oh, for a beaker full of the warm south, full of the true, the blushful hippocrene, with beaded bubbles winking at the brim and purple stained mouth, that I might drink and leave the world unseen. And with thee fade away into the forest dim. Fade far away, dissolve and quite forget what thou among the leaves hast never known. The weariness, the fever, and the fret. Here, where men sit and hear each other groan. Where palsy shakes a few sad last grey hairs. Where youth grows pale and spectre thin and dies. Where but to think is to be full of sorrow, and leaden-eyed despairs, where beauty cannot keep her lustrous eyes, or new love pine at them beyond tomorrow. Away, away! For I will fly to thee, not charioted by Bacchus and his pards, but on the viewless wings of poesy, though the dull brain perplexes and retards. Already with thee. Tender is the night, and haply the queen moon is on her throne, clustered around by all her starry fays. But here there is no light, save what from heaven is with the breezes blown through verdurous glooms and winding mossy ways. I cannot see what flowers are at my feet, nor what soft incense hangs upon the boughs. But in embalmed darkness, guess each sweet where with the seasonable month endows the grass, the thicket, and the fruit tree wild, white hawthorn and the pastoral eglantine, fast fading violets covered up in leaves, and mid May's eldest child, the coming musk rose, full of dewy wine, the murmurous horn.